This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid off somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. The song of sweetest. Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, October the 1st. We'll sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a short message for you that I hope will be beneficial. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the name and the number of the song, just in case you don't have that songbook and you'd like to sing along with us. Uh, you can either Google it or use the book that you have, and uh, hopefully we will get to praise the Lord together. The first song that we will sing this evening is number 523, I Know the Lord Will Find a Way. 523, I Know the Lord Will Find a Way. <clears throat> I know the Lord will find a way for me. I know the Lord will find a way for me. If I walk in heaven's light, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord will find a way for me. The Lord has said, go preach the word to all the world. The Lord has said, go preach the word to all the world. If I walk in heaven's light, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord will find a way for me. Won't it be grand to hear him say, Well done. Won't it be grand to hear him say, Well done. If I walk in heaven's light, Shun the wrong and do the right. Won't it be grand to hear him say, Well done. Let's turn to number 580. The name of the song is The Joy of the Lord. 580. The Joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 354. 354. 
I gave my life for thee. I gave my life for thee. For thee. 354. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be, and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? My father's house of light, my glory circle throne. I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and long. I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left aught for me? I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left aught for me? I suffered much for thee, thee more than the tongue can tell. A bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I born, I born it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? I born, I born it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? And I have brought to thee down from my own above salvation full and free, my pardon and my love. I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought for me? I bring, I bring rich gifts for thee. What hast thou brought for me? It's now part of our service where we observe the Lord's Supper as we have been instructed to do. When Jesus met with his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he took the cup. He explained to them what these symbols would be. He explained that the bread would symbolize his body that would be broken for them. He explained that his blood uh, would be, his, the fruit of the vine would be the blood that he was going to shed. And as we bring that down through uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, as Paul explained also, uh, the bread was his body, uh, the fruit of the vine was his blood, his body died in agony on the cross. His blood was shed for the remission of our sins and uh, that grace might come upon us. So it, with, it is with solemnity that we need to just take a little bit of time and uh, remember what Jesus did on the cross, what he did for you and what he did for me. Let's give thanks for the bread. We give you thanks, dear Heavenly Father, for uh, coming down to earth, uh, for sending Jesus to come down to earth. We thank you that he was willing to leave your right side, take the form of a human. And with that, that he was willing to die as a one-time sacrifice for our sins. As he hung on the cross, we can only imagine the agony that he was in as he gave up his body. And so as we take of the bread, let's remember the agony that Jesus suffered and that he suffered it for each one of us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen.
Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We are so grateful that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood, that his blood would serve as uh, the conduit for us to you, God, that uh, through the shedding of his blood, that grace might be poured down upon us, that through his blood, salvation would be given to us, that through his blood, our sins would be forgiven. Help us in our lives to remember the sacrifice and the giving of his blood. And as we are sinned against, help us to forgive because that's what the blood of Jesus stands for. Uh, be with us as we partake. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Having completed the Lord's Supper, uh, as a matter of convenience at this time, we will give thanks for our opportunity to give. Our Bibles are just literally uh, inundated with scriptures that describe giving. The Israelites were commanded to give. Uh, we are commanded to give. The Israelites were commanded to give their best to give of their first fruits. And we also, as that has come down through time, are commanded to give our best. Within giving, there is sacrifice. And the children of Israel were to sacrifice in their giving. We are to do that also. And so as we give back to the Lord, we give back to him what is his. Uh, as we come to understand, we I will leave this world with nothing just as we came into the world with nothing. And we just uh, give thought, give pause that we could give back to the church so that the kingdom of God here on earth can function as it should. Let's pray for our giving. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're thankful that we have the opportunity to give back. We know that the church needs funds to carry on uh, what it is to carry on, that we can spread the word, that we can help those that are in need. We just pray that uh, those that use these monies will come to understand that people have sacrificed in their giving. And as we give, help us to give with a cheerful heart, because we know that our God loves a cheerful giver. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the last song that we'll sing is number 601. My God and I. 601. My God and I. My God and I go in the field together. We walk and talk as good friends should and do. We clasp our hands, our voices ring with laughter. My God and I walk through the meadows you. We clasp our hands, our voices ring with laughter. My God and I walk through the meadows you. He tells me of the years that went before me. When heavenly plans were made for me to be. When all was but a dream of dim conception, to come to earth, first bird and glory see. We clasp our heart, a dream of dim conception. To come to life, first bird and glory see. My God and I will 
go for a together. We'll walk and talk as good friends should and do. This earth will pass and with it come and dry falls. But God and I will go unendingly. This earth will pass and with it come and dry falls. But God and I will go unendingly. Oh, I hope you enjoyed singing as much as we did. Uh, always glad to give glory to our God, as he certainly deserves that glory. This morning, I let you know that uh, the lesson this evening would be entitled, In Our Own Image. In Our Own Image. If, if, the, if the words seem to be a little juxtapositioned, uh, it was done purposefully. Um, I'm going to start this with this concept. There, there's something wrong with our lives when we need a, an image or some kind of icon to worship God. All right, where am I going with this? Well, if we look at the, the what we refer to as the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 through 5, here's what the, these commandments said. Pay a special attention to verse 3. And you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven or above or on the earth, beneath or in the water, under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of your fathers, on your children, on the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. What's God saying? If you've ever been to ball games, <laughs> you know that there's always somebody in the crowd that has a big old plastic or styrofoam sign with number one on it. You know, trying to signify that their team is number one. When a game is over, often we see the players with number one saying, we're number one, at least for the day. What God says is he wants to be number one. You should have no other gods before you, before you. He doesn't want us to relate to him in images or icons. Now, again, let's, let's clear aside a few things. Does that mean that, um, we should not think of the cross as a, an icon? Yes. The cross is serious and we have to have the cross in our hearts. That's where the cross belongs. It belongs in our hearts. I am not going to put anybody down who chooses to wear a cross made of some metal, usually some kind of precious metal around their neck. If that cross helps to remind them of what Jesus did for us, and we just observed the Lord's Supper, I get that. That's okay. But please remember that piece of gold is just an icon. The cross is to be in our hearts. Now, Jesus said, Jesus said, God said, you shall not make for yourself an idol 
or any likeness of what is in the heaven, the heaven above, or on the earth, beneath, or in the water, under the earth. Do we get that? There aren't supposed to be icons. <laughs> we know right from the get-go when Moses went up to the mountain to receive the oracles from God, the people became impatient. They melted down some of the gold that they had and they they uh, molded it into a calf. And they danced and they pranced around serving that golden calf in a form of idol worship. Literally, all of the civilizations around the Jews worshipped idols. They were made of wood or stone or whatever they were made of. And God says, I would have you understand, you'll have no other God but me. And don't make idols with your hands. Um, every person will, perhaps, at some point, fail to measure up to all the expectations that God has for us. And what we do is we make idols. If you remember, uh, they wanted to uh, bend down and worship Paul and Barnabas. And he said, no, 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 no. We're just men like you. Now, let's step back from that. Is it okay for us to have role models is it okay for us to have mentors? There's a chance that someone brought you to Jesus Christ. But that doesn't make him an icon. That just makes that person someone who did what they were supposed to do. They went out into all the world. They preached the word. And so we can have people as mentors but we shouldn't turn them into our idols. We, the, our civilization today does that with people. We make athletes our idols. We make movie stars our idols. We make uh, uh, unique scientists our idols. And so when we make others idols, our faith very often gets shattered because people have feet of clay. If we put too much trust in someone that we care about and they falter, uh, sometimes we falter and sometimes we are disappointed when we discover that they're human just like we are. That's why God said, you shall have no other God before you. And when Jesus was asked what the greatest command was, he said that you should worship your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul and all of your mind. Why? Because he is our God. He is our soul God. And we should have none before him. In the parable of the sower, in Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, we look at verses 16 and 17. It says, in a similar way, these are the ones on whom the seed was sown on the rocks, the rocky places, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy, but they have no firm root in themselves and are only temporary then. When affliction or persecution arises of the world, immediately they fall away. And so we, we know in the parable of the, 
the sower, that Jesus talked about seed that grew up quickly but had no root. This, I believe, in many ways, represents people that do not have a firm foundation. They don't have a firm spiritual foundation. They don't build their faith on Jesus Christ. Jesus isn't their foundation. Jesus isn't their rock. Instead of building their house upon the rock, they build their house upon the sand. What does this mean? It means something is the matter with our basic truth and our basic idea of what doctrine and truth is. That we should have no other God before us. Something or someone became idols in people's lives throughout history. And disappointment ensued. We need to build our foundation on Jesus Christ. And here's a sticky one. Our idols can sometimes be ourselves. If we read Romans chapter 1 and verse 21, it says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God and give thanks, but they came futile in their speculation, and their foolish heart was darkened. Something overshadowed what their real principles ought to have been about. And so what happened was it became futile because they put themselves and their needs ahead of God and what God has expectations about us. And so the first cre cre the first creature that people substitute for God is themselves. And this is ultimately idolatry. Worshiping themselves. We know people out there that want to be in control of every situation. They're difficult to be with, aren't they? They're not pliable and they don't get and really see the big picture. We need to see that big picture. We need to see that what God said was true. We can have no other God before us. Now, you know what? With that, humans are literally uh, incurably religious. There's, there's something about people that wants them to worship. But we can't make God in our image. We were told in Genesis that we were created in God's image. We can't call the shots. God is the one who calls the shots. That's because for all practical purposes, that sometimes we found some type of false God in our lives. And we have put ourselves in the place of the one true God and made us our priority rather than making God our priority. And with that, what idolatry can do is idolatry can be living, uh, I guess, uh, in our senses and in our appetites. Let's take a look at Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 18 and 19. Philippians 3, 18 and 19. For many walk, of whom I often told you, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, 
and whose glory is in the shame, who set their minds on earthly things. Do we get it? When earthly things become more important than godly things, what we have done is we have attempted to create God in our image instead of realizing that we have been created in his. Now, Jesus succinctly warned us about this in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. He, he warned the people about pursuing empty lifestyles. And he did so as many good teachers did with a question. He said, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? For many people, the answer is no. Those physical things are so much more important. And so, if you have anything in your lives that you absolutely refuse to give up, if God would ask it of you, then we need to make sure that we need to, that we do some self-examination. We need to be sure that we look into our hearts and say, things of this earth will never, ever, ever be more important than God. Because if they are, we run the danger of trying to create God in our image instead of we are created in his. I'll finish with the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler who came to Jesus wanting to understand the kingdom of God and Jesus saw right through it. Uh, the rich young ruler had done everything right, but Jesus saw what was there that would keep him from being one of his followers. And he said, you will have to give up all that you have, everything that you have, and give it up to feed the poor. And the man walked away sadly because he had a lot. What did he do? He put things before Jesus. And so let's please be reminded as we finish this. Uh, understand that we are created in God's image to do his work here on earth, to be servants of others. And we can't be those good servants if we try to create God in our image and make him like us. It just doesn't work. It never has, and it never will. We need to put ourselves in the position of being one of God's children. And so this evening, we offer this invitation to you. If you haven't taken Jesus into your life, if you haven't made him uh, your God, your your conduit to God. We ask you that if you understand what you must do, if you understand that if you've heard and believed that you must repent of what you have done, confess Jesus as the Son of God, and be baptized for the remission of your sins. If you need that this evening, call us and we'd be there. Let's finish with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we, we do live in a complex world. We live in a world that there are temptations all around us. There are things in the world which would attempt to draw us away from you, our true and living God. Help us to be strong. Help us to be as Jesus was when he was tempted by Satan. Help us to go back to the truth of your word for all the answers that we have and make sure that we adhere to your word and to what you want us to be, that we understand that we were created in your image. Help us not to try to make you like a man, but rather respect you and love you as the God that you are. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father. Be with us and comfort us. Uh, we just pray that in all things that... Uh, 
you would be our God and we would be your people. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid out somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. I can't feel at home in this world.